Hola YouTube, felicidades y por fin ya estamos acercando la tercera semana del nuevo año. Qué guay, ¿no? Bueno, in this video I would like to in this video and the consequent videos I may make about 10 um, in total um, on a series that I like to entitle Becoming Bilingual in which I'd like to make a beginning, lo básico, intermedio y luego avanzado, beginning, intermediate, and later on advanced videos, in which I'm really speaking about the five to ten steps I'm taking in this specific level to reach the next. So in this video in particular, it's beginners part one, and I'm talking about the five things I started off with when learning Spanish. And here they are, made a list. Um, alfabeto. Interrogativo, números y colores, vocabulario, masculino, femenino. So, number one, alfabeto. This is, oh, alphabet, oh, that's so easy. Anyone could do that. I just, it's just sounds, it's just letters. Wrong. You definitely need to learn this, and this is the most basic. It's the most rudimentary of all, because it's the sounds in which you use to make words and which those use to inform sentences. So linguistically, this is pretty complex, but it's definitely building blocks. And you need to understand these sounds of these letters in order to make these words and be intelligible. There have been times when I was in Spain and I was just like, thank God I learned the letters first and the sounds they made. Because there are people in my program who had a far more difficult time when they pronounced um, a in Spanish, A, B, C, like A, B, C, that ruins the entire flow of the language because Spanish is completely phonetic, meaning that one sound is one sound is one sound. In Spanish, A, manzana, or árbol, they're the same A. B, um, for example, bola, or uh, uh, bote. Barca. They're all B, B, B. But in English, apple, hard A, A, A. Arbergine, soft A, like a schwa, like we see in British English. And these are differences in English that do not exist in Spanish. So it's good to know an A is an A is an A. Next. Interrogativo, interrogatives, questioning. Um, where's the bus? Oh, um, is the taxi over there? How much does this cost? Who is she? These are things, these are your bread and butter in language, in building up and really being able to ask questions. And you, this is something you do in English. And this is something that's incredibly fundamental when learning um, a foreign language. Um, numbers and colors. Uh, when going to a different country, things like that, it's always important to be able to count your money, uh, to be able to tell time, things like that, like to talk to people about numbers. Because whatever you do in English, you should be able to learn in a foreign language and even master. Um, number four, vocabulario. And that vocabulary, vocabulary, vocabulary is incredibly important. Everyone thinks, oh, no verbs. I need action. I need to say how to jump, how to run, um, how to climb. Those are the most important things. Vocabulary far outweighs verbs, verbs, verbs. Vocabulary gets very complex. Adjectives, things like that, descriptions, and those are things you need to be looking out for and you need to be really going through. So things I did was vocabulario de la casa, vocabulary house of the house, you know I say couch, chair, rug, mat, door, things like that. Um, vocabulario de la familia, um, family vocabulary, aunts, uncles, mom and dad, grandma, grandpa. Um, um, vocabulario de cotidiana. Cotidiana is like daily activities. What do you do from day to day activities? Oh, I like sports. Oh, I go to school. I study biology. These are starting things. And I don't want you guys to feel as if, oh, that's what kids do. They start off with the easy stuff. I want to start off, you know, reading the newspaper. If you don't have the adequate vocabulary, which is a knowledge of thousands of words, to read the newspaper or Telemundo or Univision, watching those stations, or the other stations, you if you don't have that basic foundation, you're not going to understand. Of course, those things are good for, oh, understanding sounds, the way things should sound in the language, but you're not going to be learning vocabulary. You won't be able to build 
on vocabulary at all. Um, that's something I, it's important to stress, vocabulary. Um, and then numero cinco, number five, is masculino femenino, and that's masculine and feminine articles which are placed in front of nouns. So la silla, la silla, la mesa, la mesa, el hombre, el hombre. Um, so that's, of course, the chair, the table, and the man. These um, masculino and femenino, um, these articles are important because they're not in English. They're not found in the English language. And this is something you really need to study. And you never stop studying this. This is something you don't stop. I, the other week, was talking to a friend and said, um, la sofa, la sofa, it's el sofa. Just because the ending of sofa is feminine with an A does not mean the article must be feminine as well. So there are things that are exceptions to the rules and that must be studied. And that will conclude, I guess, the five things that I started off with when learning the Spanish language. I'll, of course, continue with more videos on the beginning level, um, talking about more things that I really delve into. But this is it for now. Um, thank you for watching. Hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you later. Goodbye!